So hi and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. As you know on these we do gaming product reviews like peripherals, like mice, keyboards, gaming PCs, mining rigs and some other technologies. But today we're going to be doing it on a benchmark for the 1070 EVGA. So I'm going to show you the original standard benchmarks for Play Unknown Battleground, Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Grand Theft Auto 5. Then I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on how to overclock it and how I did it and show you the results going forward using Heavily Benchmark. You can skip this, I'll put the time in the window when that's on so you know how to skip forward to look at the overclock results. And again, I'll run it for Play Unknown, Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Grand Theft Auto. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see some more of these, hit the like and subscribe button. So in order to overclock the EVGA 1070 for the Win 2 edition, and you can do this for any EVGA product, this is just specifically, I'm going to be doing it on the 1070 here. Um, you need their precision software, which you can download from their website, which is evga.com forward slash precision XOC overclock. You'll need a login. I've got one there. Um, and you download this software, except their download, you know, their terms of agreement here. I always go standalone. I'm guessing stream means you get an EXE and then you can just download the rest as you download it. So once you've got the standalone version, run through and install that. The latest one is 1.13 here. Just double click this as normal. Any application you'll do, follow the next process all the way through. I'll put links in the description. Once you've rebooted, you'll get this menu here. It'll either be down here, the XOC here. So these are the default clock ones. You can see here, nothing been edited yet. ODC means on-screen display. That shows like FPS and things within applications. K allows you to have some kind of power saving mode. I don't use that either. The For the Win 2 version has additional sensors. These are what these are here. Shows you some of the power requirements. If you want to understand what the difference is between the For the Win and For the Win 2, clock speeds are the same. You get a different customized PCB board and you get these additional sensors. So you've seen the statistics for player unknown battlegrounds and a few other games, what the FPS is going to be like. This is on the standard clock. So today we're just going to try and overclock it. I'll show you some of the basics. Each one is going to be different. You can have to run through some tests yourselves and that will depend on how good your card's going to be. Each one could be overclocked slightly more or less. Some of the things you need to look for is the power target. You can put this to 112% and 91 degrees. The card will only ever use as much as it needs at that point in time. 91 degrees is probably a little bit hot. The point in the comments if you think that is or not, I'm going to put it down to a maximum of 85. I think that's probably a fair heat temperature. Probably still in the safe zone a little bit. You can overclock the core voltage here, and we might do this, but again, you've got to be very careful with this core voltage. The ones we're going to mainly target here are the GPU clock offset and memory offset. Now, I do the memory first, and then I do the our clock offset second. If you're just using this for mining, this will give you around 30 mega hash. If you do it for gaming, then it's going to depend a little bit differently. This one's going to be for gaming more today. But as a quick one, if you're going to do for mega hash, for mining, you just want to do the memory overclock generally. The GPU isn't going to give you too much more. But for gaming anyway, we are going to start with a memory overclock. I'm going to give it 200 here at this first bat. Basically typing your number push return. You can move the bar either way if you want. I'm going to leave that on zero. I'm going to run some benchmark tests. We're going to use Heavenly Benchmark 4.0. I'm just going to run it and see what temperatures we get. Make sure it doesn't crash. And then we'll keep doing that and keep the mem clock here until I get one that's stable. So once Heavenly is opened, um, if you don't know this, you can download it as well. I'll put the link in the description. You just want to click benchmark. Okay, so when it's completed running, you'll end up with this FPS score here. It tells you the FPS, the score, the max, the minimum. Some of the settings you're using here. I'm using DirectX 11 here. You can use DirectX 12. And it gives you some of the window modes that I've run it in as well. You can save this if you want. I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to continue and keep clocking up the memory until it becomes unstable. Once you know that setting stable, which I'm going to say this one is here, if you click on profile one, you enable that profile. So that will now I click default and I push one here. You'll see it'll set the profile, but that means that profile is now saved. I know that's a stable profile. I'll move on to the next one. So the next one we're going to do, 
I'm going to go up in hundreds for the minute. As it gets a little bit more unstable, you might want to start knocking it back to 25, so like 225, 250, but we know 200 is pretty stable. I'm going to apply that setting. I'm going to run it. If it crashes, then I know to go back to the 200 and then to start trimming it a bit further. Once we're happy with the memory, then we'll do the GPU clock speed. Okay, so we're here again. Second one is run now. This is at 300, and you can see here we've got quite a bit of an FPS increase, around 5 FPS. So it's not a bad result. If you want to keep checking this for you guys, it's probably worth you saving it so you can see what the difference is. I'm just going to try and memorize it. So on to the next one. I'm going to do 400. Actually, one sec. need to save it first. So that's one thing to remember. I'm going to save it as profile 300. need to remember that. Put it as profile 2 here. So we can go to 1. We've got profile 2, which we know is working, so I can always remember and revert back. And the next one's going to be profile 4, which we're going to do 400. Still keeping the GPU clock speed down, set that and let's rerun it again. Okay, so on 400 here, we're seeing a slightly downgraded result, which I didn't expect, but this is what we're seeing here. This is at 120 now instead of 123 or above, which is what it was at 300 megahertz. So that's slightly concerning. I'll probably rerun the bench here and just see if I get the same result, because I would expect it to be higher. My uh, Haven benchmark is running on extreme and as you can see it's in 16 by 900. You can change these if you wish. And um, this is why I just run them on, just to give me an idea across all my platforms and all my hardware that I'm using. I use the same settings. Another thing to note is here, the GPU temp hasn't changed. It's been about 70 degrees. It's nowhere near the 84C. And the only thing that is changing here are the fans here on the side here. The left one is the GPU and the right one is the memory. Okay, so more how I would have expected it to come out after doing 400 and upgrading the memory here, we've got a 124 FPS average. So one thing to learn here is that you have to keep running a few of them. You have to keep running the test a few times just to make sure you're getting some true results. The first one might not always be what you expected. If I see it increase, then I generally accept that. If I don't see an increase, I'll run it again. If that's still the same, then um, then you've got a bit of a problem, really. It should always increase if you turn the clock speed up. So on to the next test. So 400, it's been stable. We're going to move this back to um, the next one here. So we've got number three profile. Oops, once I get it right, so we've got two, three. So we've done a 200, a 300, and a 400. We're going to try 500 here. The average that is generally going to be good for memory. If you've got a decent card with decent memory, you're going to get between four to 500, I would say, memory clock on it. Plus, if it's not very good or it's okay average, you're probably going to get around 300 and below that zero. Um, you're probably going to get, well, you get nothing. You've probably just got a standard card from uh, EVJ. And it's pre overclock state. You probably get between three to 500 though. The chipsets are normally pretty good on EVGA. So let's go for 500. I'm probably expecting it to crash here, but hey, who knows? One other thing to note here is once this does crash on this flash BIOS, and once we've done the GPU overclock, I'll then run it on its secondary BIOS. These EVGAs come with two BIOSes, and one of them can be better than the other. Okay, so this one crashed heavenly at 500. So we're going to try 450 and see what that does. Okay, so it's run successfully on 450 here without crashing. We've got an FPS of 125, so a fraction gain here, really not particularly much over 400, but it was stable. So we're going to accept that. Let's pause it as a profile of 4. So we've got 200, 300, 400, 450. This is just so I can remember. You've got up to 10 profiles here. You can keep stepping back just in case you crashes on you, which you can do. So we could try 500, which I'm probably going to do now. So we're going to try 500 again. We know it crashes or bombs out. And that could be one of two things. It could be due to power. So we need to get a little bit more voltage or just because it just can't handle that kind of stability. So we're going to give it a little bit more power. I recommend you probably don't do too much on this. I'm going to do 10%. I certainly wouldn't put it to the top. This is the one that's probably most risky towards blowing your card up. So do it at your own risk. I won't say how much to do. This is really your choice. The safest way is just to turn these two up without any additional voltage and then you know your card will be good. The test is completed, it didn't crash, but what you did see, and you can see here from the minimum FPS of five, is it hung quite a few times on certain shadows. Normally I would stop this, because I know it's not gonna be a good result, although it's at 120 FPS average, and this is because it's not gonna be very good when you're playing it, you're gonna get a lot of freezing and lockups. So we're gonna up the voltage again a little bit here by another 5%, and we're gonna see whether it's stable. Okay, even with an additional 5% power here, it's bombed out. So we'll try it to another 10%, give me 20% extra power, and we'll run it again. Now a few things to look out for are memory um, glitching, where you start to get like a breakup of pixels, that's called artifacting. 
keep an eye on those. They're generally overheating issues as well as memory overclocking issues. So 20% power, 500, here we go. Okay, so that one ran with 15% um, power, or 20%, sorry, power, 500 hertz, and we still got one lockup. Um, but that was it really, I only looked at once and gave it to four frames, it's just dragged down the FPS. So I'm going to try once more, we're going to go for 25% here, and then failing that we will start doing the GPU clock. And there you go, it's hung. So it seems 450 seems to be the stable one for this one at the moment. 500 does seem to be pushing it a little bit far. You can see it letting go there. So let's reset it back to 400. 450, sorry, is where we were happy with it. We know that's okay. I'm going to push the clock up by 100 hertz this time. Power is left out at no increase. As you can see, because I didn't need any 450, and we'll run this now. You could probably try it to 475, but I'm going to be happy with 450. It can be quite a tedious process, as you've seen here, so you have to bear with it. It takes about five minutes per bench, and you just have to keep tweaking it bit by bit. Some of the gains are good, especially at the start. After that, it's quite low percentages that you'll get back, especially between 450 to 500, and maybe get a frame or two. Um, so after like three, 400, it's not really worth it, in my opinion. You might as well be happy with a reasonably stable overclock. So let's try the GPU here and see what happens. Okay, so again, an additional improvement here on the FPS, around three FPS, nearly four, um, to 127 here. That's with the additional 100 GPU clock. It's pretty stable, it's not crashed at all. Not pretty stable, it is stable, it didn't crash. GPU temperatures are good, so we're gonna go again. This time we're gonna do uh, 150. Do you know 50 is on the GPU? It's a little bit more sensitive. The memory's quite easy to clock fast, but GPU can be very touchy. I expect him probably to get about 200 maybe. This might be the top here to 300. You won't get much more than that. Uh, these are water cooled, uh, these are air cooled. I haven't overclocked them any GPU water block or anything like that. So just standard out of the box from EVGA. Ooh, it's not liking it. You can see here, you start to get these little bits of problems. Can maybe get a bit more voltage. So that makes me worried. I'm gonna give it 10 volts at 150. Oh, doesn't like it. Let's see how it goes. 150, GPU, extra 10% power. Let's see how it goes. It could be because I've not pushed up the power target because this is only used when it's required. It could be that that's giving it a bit of a problem here. You can see it's going nuts. So let's push up the uh, power target here. I don't think it's gonna make any difference. So we'll let it take some more power. I think I can use it when it needs it. It's never been nowhere near what night one degrees. It hasn't moved over 70 degrees yet. Cooling's very good on this. You're gonna be happy. Uh, it's not liking 150. You can see it's just continuously hanging, even just running the background effect here. Let's scale the power down, put it out to 125. Let's see if that works any better. Like I said, this one can be a little bit more touchy. And as you can see, that is the case. We've got the second BIOS to try here. This is still on the first BIOS. Come on, baby. Each car's different. Like I say, each car's unique. So you have to do each car's going to be slightly different on the performance you can get out of it. Good one, bad one, okay one. Let's try this at 125. Zero power to the power fit. I've upped the uh, power target, but again, it only uses this when it needs it, so I don't think it's needed it yet. But who knows? Let's see how it runs. Okay, so at, the, at 125, with no additional power, it's freezing. As you can see here, this is what it's currently stuck at. Drop it down to 10 FPS. So we're going to need to try maybe giving it a bit of extra power and see what it does. That clearly isn't working. So let's give it, let's give that 10% power boost. Maybe that's causing it a problem. These are some of the things you have to tweak and play around a little bit and just find out where the right settings are. Take some time. Let's see what this one runs at. Now you can see, I can see these little flickers. If you guys can see that, where it's having some issues, especially early on there. So we're going to ramp it back down to 100. That seems to be the safe part for this one so far. So Profile 5 gave us 100 plus on the GPU clock and a memory clock of 450 and it gave us about 10 frames per second it came out at 118 originally and it finished at like 127.8 so it's given us about five percent increase on the over on the standard overclock here so we're going to flip the bias over and we're going to try again okay so on the second bios here one thing i didn't show you was when the software loads up at the start one you need to make sure it starts 
with Windows if you want the overclock to work straight off the bat. And you do this by clicking this option here. So under that cog, you've got to start with the OS. You want to need that enabled. And under the profile, you need to pick which profile you want it to start with. So mine starts with profile one. Hence, it's booted up and it's on 200%, plus 200. So we're going to start it here with the firmware where we ended with the first bars, which is 10450. And we're just going to give it a go and see what it does. Okay, so we finished that overclock, and without any changing anything else, we've already got up to 129.4 from the 127 originally clocked at this one on the first BIOS. So that's a pretty good improvement. I mean, that could just be down to me running the benchmark a different time, like we saw before, where we jumped by four frames. So, but as you can see, it's on the way up. So we're going to overclock it this one again now to 500 and see what it does on the memory. Might give us the same result, but you know, you never know till you try. Let's give it a run. 129.9 on 500 and 100. This time it was stable. Keep on increasing it. We're going to go 550. Okay, so it's had one skip. It's down to 5 FPS here. We're going to reset. We're going to try and push it another 20 volts, see what it does. And then we'll probably just push up the GPU and stop it at 500. We've got another 50 out of it, didn't we? We're stopping at 500. At the moment we've got another 100 out of it. If we can get that to be stable, secondary BIOS has worked and given us a little bit of a boost. Rumour has it that is one of the options you can get away with somehow. I don't know what difference that makes in the secondary BIOS. I guess it depends which one's good or bad. Some of them give you slightly better perks. And you can see we don't go very far because it's crashed already pretty much. It's frozen, we can drop the FPS, there you go. Okay, so 500 seems to be the stable one. Let's go back to that. We're gonna ramp this up by 50. So 150. So we can get a bit extra out of this GPU overclock. In the comments, if you're liking the way I'm clocking here, I want to show you each step. I think this might give you an idea of how long it can take and what you need to do. If you'd rather just show me the first and last step, then you know, let me in the comments so I know going forward the kind of format you guys would like to see. So it was looking really good there. I thought it was going to hold out to the end of the FPS bench and it crashed. So I'm going to give it another 5 volts, 5% 5 here. Click apply uh, and see how it goes again with the same settings. It was pretty stable, it just bombed out. So let's just try and push it a little bit further, this card. So it's been stable there at 125 GPU and 500 memory, no uh, voltage. We've finally broken that 130 FPS mark from the 118. I'm still not 100 happy. I'm going to try a 525 here <laughs> just because I want to try that. Again, each one's slightly different. So let's just go for 525. This is probably going to be the last one, and let's see how this actually runs. I might, yeah, 525. GPU clock's probably going to be the max it's going to get, so they are a bit more sensitive. Let's see if we get a bit more out of it. It's already looking a bit ropey. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's hung up. <laughs> Doesn't like the 525. We are done. So now we're going to run it against some of the games, things like Player Unknown. We're going to see what that real world clock has uh, has done for for gaming and yes it was worth it because you know heavenly is kind of a bit false so on what it looks like against my player unknown stats that are on standard now we'll show against overclocked and show what benefit you can get in a game So as you can see, this is quite a time consuming process. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial here on how to overclock this EVGA. This does also work for other 1070 cards. You can use the EVGA precision software there. As I'll be doing another benchmark overclocking the MSI armor version of the 1070 and then comparing it to the EVGA as well. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see some more of these and thanks for watching and I'll catch you all again later. Bye bye.